and they said, wow, could it be that this country, or these countries are very vaccinated against this disease and is the vaccine helping fight coronavirus? So they're putting it to the test. They're doing clinical trials. Uh, they're under. What's up, my friends? The COVID-19, aka the coronavirus, is taking over our lives. It's a, it's a monster. And it's one of those things that we wouldn't wish on our worst enemy. Now, the idea of this video is for us to bring to the forefront how we feel, how this has affected us in our daily lives. And I wish I had all the answers, but I don't. The only answer that I have for everyone, for my family, everyone out there is that we will make it through this. There is light at the end of the tunnel. You know what I mean? We will stick together and we'll make it through this. Yes, there'll be some casualties. Yes, loved ones, friends of loved ones, friends of friends. Lives will be lost. And it's a horrible thing. It's a horrible feeling. You know what I mean? But we have to keep faith and stay together and know that this is going to be over at some point. But we will have the scars of this moving forward. Six years from now, when we look back on this, you'll be able to say, damn, we stuck together. We went through the dark days, but we stuck together and we made it through. Here's some of my friends. Well, these are... Uh hasn't affected me like uh, directly, personally. Thank God for that. <clears throat> but <clears throat> mentally, it takes a toll on you. You know, um, me being in a, an essential worker, I have to drive every day to New York to deliver food to New Yorkers. You know, like like a lot of workers out there. You know, God bless them, and uh, you know, you you have this sense of like. Sometimes like fear. I mean, I give it up to essential workers. You know, they're they're in the front line of this. They're they're risking themselves every day. You know, for other people. You know, uh, you got people in in pharmacy where they got people coming in and they have no other choice but to get their medicine. But then they're affecting other people. And and then when you take that home, you don't know. You know what you got in contact with so you're constantly in the back of your mind you know you're gonna bring it home to your family you're gonna bring it home to your kids you know you don't know you just don't know colossus street kings car club how this virus affected me it affected me in a way that i can't explain um sent away from my kids i'm used to being with them all the time so this is a difficult time for me but i know it's necessary as an essential worker, I'm exposed to this virus. And one thing I would to hate to do is bring it to my back, bring it back to my little one. I'm an essential worker myself, so I understand the severity of going out there and and going to work, making this money, you know, to take care of our families and how we're putting each other on, uh, in harm's way or whatever. So, you know, it's, it's all understandable. Is it fearful? Yes. Do, you know, do we want to catch this and bring this home to our families? Absolutely not. The way I see it is um, there's a lot of people out there who thought this was a hoax. Uh, they thought that it was fake. Um, it, this is very real. It's a real situation. And uh, now it's here. We got to deal with it. But we all got to play our part. It's hard to deal with. 
You know, I'm here in Puerto Rico, and not only with the COVID that we're dealing with here, but I've dealt with situations in the past, like Hurricane Irma, Hurricane Maria, the earthquakes, and now there's COVID. I can't believe it, you know? It's, it's sad because that's the life you gotta live. Like you really don't wanna have in contact with your kids when you're an essential worker because you just don't know whether you caught it, when you infected, or you could be symptomatic, you know what I'm saying? So it's, it's a very scary situation. It's to be an essential worker right now, I commend all of them and I just ask God to put his hands on them and just protect them and their families from it. You know what I mean? Um, this whole COVID thing, man, it's crazy. You know, uh, shout out to New York. Shout out to a lot of those cities and states and countries that lost a lot of people. And, and to those of you who lost loved ones, you know, my heart goes out to y'all. I'm fortunate that I haven't lost any of my family members or anybody that I know to this. But once again, my heart goes out to y'all. Um, How has this affected me being over here in Florida? It's been really rough. Family, my kids are in New York. I was supposed to start a car club out here, but it's gonna have to be on standby. I just wish that these times will get better. Uh, this uh, this coronavirus 19 is uh, shocked a lot of people, hurt a lot of people, died a lot of people, a lot of deaths. People that's innocent died. I heard this too. Everybody, you know, a lot of people dying, and especially I work in the medical field, and I know how it is, and I see bodies every day, and it's not. It hurts me a lot, just my heart, man. Hey guys, wherever you may be, I hope you're well and staying safe from this COVID-19 situation. I pray everybody in your family and all your friends and everybody around you is safe as well. I um, just want to let everybody know that uh, this lockdown has been pretty hard. Uh, for many people, there's people that go through domestic violence right now, maybe still home with their abusers, children being abused, um, maybe they're too, maybe they have like ADHD and they're too hyper, or maybe it's just too much on the parents to have to be with the kids 24-7, non-stop, trying to be the teacher as well as being a mom and a wife or whatever you may be. Um, same thing goes for dads as well. My heart goes out to a lot of yours and especially those people that are still working and out there getting it. Much love to y'all and thank y'all for your services and what y'all do for us. I personally don't know anybody that has been diagnosed with the COVID-19. But regardless, if we know each other or not, it's still a tragic thing to go through. And we can't do nothing but pray and wish the best for everybody, regardless if we know each other or not. Hicieron una pregunta que como yo me sentía con toda esta situación que está pasando, pues mira, es muy frustrante y muy alarmante. Eh, cuando tú eres madre o padre, pues tú te preocupas más en los niños, en tus hijos, en tus seres queridos. Eh, y trátate por lo menos de no salir para no poder contagiarte. Essential workers, I'm one, my husband, my kids, and we all scared that we can bring it home to our kids, grandkids, and my, you know, to my mom. How do I feel about essential workers going to work? It's dangerous, it's scary, because me, myself, as you can see, I'm an essential worker. I'm leaving my house, knowing what's in my house. We're going through the streets, not knowing what I'm bringing back into my house, to my family. It's dangerous and scary. And we are putting our lives at risk. But at the end of the day, we have to do what we have to do. It's 
been hard. It's I've been coping with it. You know, sometimes I get anxiety and sometimes I don't. I'm just dealing with it. This has affected my wife deeply, you know what I mean? I have to constantly see my wife cry and 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 go through the struggles of dealing with this, you know what I mean? But we're all together in this, you know, it's my job to to keep my family strong and keep everybody out there strong, you know what I mean? It's our job. My wife and I have been blessed enough to keep our jobs and keep our children healthy. We worry about their health and mental well-being throughout this trying time. We take as much precaution as possible to ensure that we do not bring this beast home to them. They take care of us night and day, tirelessly, sometimes getting infected themselves, also losing their lives. What about them? What about their families? They need to know that we love them and appreciate them for what they do. They risk their lives out there to take care of these, you know, these, you know, tensions, you know, you know, between the virus and bow and that, you know, risk their life and, you know, thank you for your hard work. Hey, good evening, everyone. I'm here to discuss about this apocalyptic coronavirus that's going on and the effects it's had on me. Um, first and foremost, I want to say thank you to all our first responders, our healthcare workers, our truck drivers, our grocery workers, our drainatorial staff. Thank you, and I salute you. Wow, man. This coronavirus ain't no joke, man. It's crazy. A lot of people suffering from anxiety and depression over the fact of what's going on in the world today. I never thought like something like this would occur over the time being, man. And I think about my siblings and my family, and... Uh, just um, I'm on I'm on pins and needles thinking when is it or is it going to touch our family? So this has been very surreal, and God bless us all. And and you know I pray for for everyone that's that's going through this and has lost somebody. How do I feel about essential workers? I don't know what to feel. I have two daughters that are essential workers right now. My ass is staying home because I got furloughed from work. And I got my you know, two babies out there. Doing you know what they gotta do. Yo, my hat off to all those nurses, doctors, EMS, police, firemen, all of them doing what they gotta do. For all of the people that came back from retirement to help. That goes off to them as well, man. Risking their lives. Yo, know, that's a great thing. Not a lot of people would do that. My hat goes off to everybody that has and continues to do it. Um, all I gotta say about that, man. First responders are doing a great job. And um, I hope they take care of themselves because they also have family at home. God bless them. First off, we have to say thank you to all these first responders. All the grocery store workers who never really even mattered to anybody before. Everything that they're doing to keep everybody going strong. All the healthcare workers, EMTs, risking their lives to go home to their families after handling all this. And at the end of the day, they're all that really matters. To my family, friends, and essential workers, I will continue to have you in our prayers. Remember, we are all in this together. I feel like they're very brave. Um, they're amazing people for trying to help out everybody else, knowing that their life is at risk. The first responders are the true heroes in this war against the coronavirus. God bless them for all they do for us. We should all be grateful. Hospitals, they're calling for help too late. I don't think the numbers that people are getting are accurate. I don't think they're counting COVID deaths in the field that we're pronouncing as the official numbers are grim enough.
Bueno, mi gente, eh, ¿cómo este virus nos, puede, nos está afectando a nosotros? Esto es algo que, como se llama, una pandemia, donde nos ha afectado a nosotros, a toda la comunidad en el mundo. Cada país, cada pueblo, mucha gente sufriendo. Eh, nos ha afectado en, en, en tantas cosas que uno no se puede ni imaginar. You know, it's no joke, guys, and unfortunately, it doesn't look like it's gonna come to end anytime soon. So I pray, and guys, please mind your social distancing, wash your hands, do what you need to do, keep you and your family safe. I see this every day, and it's 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 hard. It really is. Um, sorry, I'm getting a little choked up because, like I said, it it it, it hurts. The dark days are with us right now, but they won't stay dark forever, man. Um, my words of encouragement would be just don't lose hope. Um, have faith, pray. Essential workers, first responders, they're all awesome. How do I feel about it at another level? I'm scared. You know, my wife's on the job. You know, she's with the NYPD. She had to be out there all types of hours or late at night. You know, I'm scared for her. I'm scared for us. I'm scared for my family. I'm scared for my kids, you know. They worry. I worry. You know, I, I hate to see my wife walk out the door in uniform and, you know, not knowing if she's going to get sick. Shit. My vice president, he's a first responder. You know, he's a fireman, you know what I mean? And, and and I worry about him every day, you know, when he has to go out and he has to do his job or whatever, you know, you never know what, what encounters he's gonna he's gonna run into. So, you know, it, it, it yeah, it does it does um it does put a, a a strain on how we think and it takes a toll on your mentality, on your head, everything, you know what I'm saying? My father, my brother, my oldest son works in the heart of New York, ground zero, you know what I mean? So it's 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 something that you think about daily. Hey, what's up, everybody? So they wanted to know a topic on how I felt about the first responders. I absolutely love it. I love giving the time that I have to give to the people that need it the most. And uh, this is one reason why I love it the most. So, this is why I love being a first responder. One for all, all for all. Like I said, tirelessly, they work around the clock to take care of us. This is why they get serenaded for the work that they're doing all around the country.
thanking these heroes from a distance. In this moment, there is only one team. You know, we're tied together by caring for others. The Comfort, a massive thousand bed floating hospital. Docs in New York to help out with the victims of the coronavirus. Heroes come in all type of ways. Our military helping out with the efforts, helping wherever they're needed, cleaning schools, to building hospitals in the middle of Central Park, New York, and taking care of us. God bless them. A motorcycle MC visits the Holy Oak Veterans Home in Massachusetts as our heroes from the past also got infected with the coronavirus. These gentlemen showed love and support to our heroes of the past. Bless their hearts. In Gainesville, the Sheriff and Police Department are handing out free BBQ meals to the truckers on the road. A beautiful gesture and understanding to what these truckers mean to our country. I am grateful for the Lord for looking over us and helping us through this time. I pray that his love and protection continues to be with us through this and always. I don't know what anybody's going through in their own house or, you know, there's people out there that are alone. Check on the people that are alone, that live by themselves. Those are the ones that are probably getting hit the hardest because they can't really go anywhere. Check on your elderly neighbors. See if you can go to the store for them if they need something. This corona, whatever you want to call it, uh, it doesn't care about the nationality. It doesn't care if you're an MC, AC, social club. It doesn't care if you're an outlaw. It doesn't care what you do in life, if you're rich, poor. Um, this is real. So I have an employee that, um, that her brother passed away from COVID-19. Um, first person I know to uh, call as close to me that I know that lost somebody due to the virus. Then a couple of days later, her father passed away to COVID-19. To me, that was, um, that was such a horrible feeling because I put myself in her shoes and I couldn't believe what she was going through and how this was affecting her. She couldn't even do a proper burial for any of them. I don't know if you have it or not, so, you know, you could look perfectly fine. I could be a carrier, you know what I'm saying, and give it to the next person and I would never know, you know what I'm saying, and that person just dies or something and you're like oh shit like i was the last motherfucker with him or something or her you know and, and you know you just just gotta open up open up your you know think think before you do man uh, i do know somebody that was exposed to it and it's a good chance that he has it and he's like my brother i'm not going to mention his name and um it's really hard to deal with because he have a lot of health issues and I don't know how I could handle if something happened to this guy. And, um, I think we need to take it seriously because this is real and anybody could get it. It don't care about the race, sex, nothing. Um, let's take care of ourselves and remember every day to tell your loved ones you love them because you never know what will happen. Sure can. I know people who passed away from it. I know people who are still in the hospital fighting it. I know people who are quarantined fighting it. It's hard. Que el miedo que tú tienes al salir a la calle y venir a tu casa y poder contagiar a tus hijos o contagiarte tú y que no te puedan ver y que no te puedan abrazar es muy frustrante. Um, but there are some positives that have come out of this, believe it or not. You know, I can see in my own little world, the closeness, people pulling together, the respect, people donating, people calling and saying, what can we do to help you guys? You know, people, whether it's donating drinks, food, or just calling and saying thank you, you know, it means a lot. The harsh reality of what this coronavirus is, people sick, people dying. Doctors doing all they can to save lives. 
It's hard to endure the pain and the suffering going on in the world right now. All we can do is pray. Gilberto Garcia, known as Goya, he was attacked by the COVID-19. In the hospital at this moment, clinging to his life. A family man. A friend. A member of the Los Capitanes Auto Club. Por eso que es algo tan a él le ha dado bastante duro. Una persona que está en el hospital lo hemos sufrido. Eh, aparte del club y todo eso, él será un miembro y todo eso, pero es una persona que mucha gente aprende. O sea, es una enseñanza. Una persona que nos, nos habla, nos enseñó mucho. Y yo sé que él va a seguir batallando para salir de eso. Boy, as a excellent individual, man. I had the pleasure of meeting him several years ago when I called out on the on the car club community for some help to help out uh, some victims of a fire. And him and his team was one of the first ones to come and see me and, and put their grain of salt down to help out. That's how we kicked off our friendship. Su esposa, parte de la familia, la queremos muchísimo. Sé que ella está sufriendo más que nosotros. Y lo único que pedimos es, Goya, levántate de ahí. The reason his wife is not here on this video is because she's too distraught to be here and um and talk about it. She's very emotional. She's pretty broken down right now at the moment, you know, with him being in the hospital and all that stuff. So, you know, she asked me to speak for her. So, Elizabeth, we have you and your family in our prayers. We have Goya in our prayers, and I know with the grace of God, he'll pull through this. Topa. Para algo. Tenemos la fe que, que ese hombre va a salir de ahí. Coya, levántate. We're waiting for you, brother. Eric Augusto, a lifelong childhood friend, also was attacked by the COVID-19. You know, I, you know, not only Coya being in the in the hospital right now on a ventilator. Um, holding on to his life. I also have a childhood friend that uh, that I learned a few days ago that he was in the hospital on a ventilator. And it was like a ton of bricks, like everything coming from all different directions be hitting me. And, you know, I can't even, can't even imagine being in that situation. I can't imagine what, you know, what their families are going through right now. It's horrible. Friends from the old neighborhood in the Bronx. Blood couldn't make us any closer. My buddy Eric, we grew up together, you know. Um, we grew up together and it, and it was, you know, it was hard to get that type of news. No matter the distance, the brotherhood from Shakespeare Avenue still remains strong. I, um, 
you know, I know that he couldn't answer me at that moment because he's sick and, but, um, I, uh, I went on his, on his Instagram and I went on his inbox and I left him a, a message letting him know that we were thinking about him and that, that we have our prayers up for him and his family. So it's, it's, it's a tough situation to go through something like that. I was, I was praying to God for him to answer me back. Wake up, Eric. Your Shakespeare fam is waiting for you. This virus, it's, it's not like everybody's thinking. It's not like, oh, it's just the flu. It's just, it's worse. And, and it, what gets me frustrated is people are not taking it seriously. Everything, everything that you guys are going through, you're not alone. There's people out there that have mental illness that are taking their own life because they can't cope with the lockdown. They can't cope with not being around people. It's sad. We don't know what anybody's going through. It's vicious, you know, and uh, and it takes a toll on you. It takes a toll on you mentally, physically. You know, my brother ended up getting this stuff. He got it just, you know, living in the city he lives in. He came to visit two weeks ago and he ended up in the hospital fighting for his life my whole family had to go and get tested for this shit living in fear it's not easy it's really scary it's it's just there's no words for any of this I got family and friends who live in Connecticut and Bridgeport exactly you know I worry about them I've lost family members in Ecuador. You know, I just started getting to know through the net. Lost a few friends. It's really sad, you know. And then I really don't wish this on anybody, not even my worst enemy. I have a friend. I have maybe two friends. I've had, um, I have a relative and friends that have been through it already. Some of them have survived. One is on a ventilator. My heart goes out to all those who had lost loved ones in these difficult times. This COVID-19 pandemic has altered all lives globally. How's this virus affecting my life? Um, it's affected in many ways. Financially, how I spend, um, emotionally, I could say mentally as well, you know, there's more to the story than, you know, there is, um, but I just got to put God forward and pray for better days. Andrew Como, a true leader in every sense of the word. This man has been honest with New Yorkers. He has kept New York together and the whole country to some degree, something that our commander-in-chief doesn't know how to do. Andrew Cuomo is truly a man of the people. Bless his heart. In life, they are true leaders, people who genuinely care. Then there's Donald Trump, our president. A man that knows nothing about leadership or how to keep a country together in a moment of despair or crisis. He can't seem to get out of his own head with his lies and deceit. No one respects an egomaniac bullshitter. Your president done everything possible to keep you together or has he done a shitty job? What are your thoughts? I mean, I mean he did a shitty job for me. Because, you know, he's supposed to protect us, knew about it, you know, before, like a couple of months back, he's a, he knew about it, why he didn't do nothing about it to stop it. Now we, we're affected and, you know, people are dying because of him, you know, that's, that's my, that's my heart. It's that Trump punk ass motherfucker that caused all this bullshit. I don't care. He's a scumbag. Because he could have prevented this shit, but he didn't. He failed. Yeah, nobody wants to hear what I got to say about that man. How do I feel about the stimulus check? The stimulus check is just to get by. It's just 
something for us to think that it's going to hold us down for a month or two. It's really not. Because at the end of the day, once these two months go by, we're still going to have to pay bills. We're still going to have to pay rent. We're still going to have to feed ourselves. We're still going to have to feed our families. So all that is just a government cover-up. That's what I feel about that. All those essential people who are putting their lives on the line because of this dumb-ass virus that Trump caused. Hey, let's check. Let's talk about that for a bit. My opinion on it, it's a cover-up. They think by giving us money, everything is going to be okay. Let's think about it. It's now when you can barely get in a store to shop. By the time that money comes in, everything will be shut down. Me personally, don't care about the check. I just want to earn mine and have our lives back, be able to enjoy the world without a curfew. I've been pretty critical of him because he hasn't been forthcoming with us. Um, I don't know. It's like 50% of people think he's a bad person and 50% of people think he's a good person. Um, personally, I feel like he's not giving us the full truth of things that we want to know as a community. I think he's a lousy president. All the money in the world won't save his piece of shit ass when it's time to answer to God. I promise you that. How do I feel about the possibility of not having a car club season this year? Well, I did retire from the club scene, but I still always will go and show love and support to those that are still out there um, in the car club and motorcycle club and all those social club things. Um, it's like a whole community. Um, taking us away from that is just, you know, so different. Um, what else can I say? It's, it's, it's going to be, it's shocking for a lot of people. It's going to be hard because there's a, that's always a way to bond and create friendships. And some people have even became family. Yeah, we're now with this lockdown and shit, V. We gotta do what we can at home, man. Stay occupied, just keep us close to this uh, car club stuff that we love to do. There it is, Citrus is uh, a work in progress again, you know what I'm saying? Got Achilles over there working on him, so it's a lot of projects to keep me going through while we, until we get back out there again and do what we love to do, man. It affected me because I miss my car club family, my brothers, and just being normal. <laughs> trancando los calchones y sabrá Dios cuando vamos a volver yo no a reunirnos pero estamos para esa How do you feel about possibly not having a car club season? Health comes first in anything. Yep, two words. First of all, uh, as most of you, you know, y'all know I have a big team and I have a big family and the fact that we might not even have a car season this year is kind of affecting us and it's, it's really bothering us you know what i mean because we do this for for other families and we do this for organizations and etc um the fact that we have to stay quarantined and away from each other and six feet etc etc you know that's something that we never experienced before a local club lo local show la mayoría de esos suspendido no no hay nada que se pueda hacer para uno, tú me entiendes, no podemos estar cerca de otra persona y se entiende. También he visto muchas personas, muchas historias que no han presentado síntomas ni nada y han salido positivos con esto. Y eso es una de las cosas que uno tiene que protegerse. Ahora mismo yo yo estoy hablando con haciendo este video lo más bien y cuando viene a ver Estoy positivo y usted me va bien. Esa es un, es un ejemplo que, que lo estoy viendo sobre otras personas. What keeps me busy is uh, working on my cars, dealing with my animals. Here in Puerto Rico, things are a lot different. You know, it's not like uh, out in the States. Man, we have, to, uh, we have to keep our minds occupied at home and, you know, no car club season at the moment, you know, so we're all trying to stay focused and doing what we love to do as far as cars or anything that comes close to what we do. And we're here in my garage trying to kill time.
As you see, I got my car nice and shiny, hasn't gone nowhere, you know. How am I coping with it? Well, try to do the best I can, you know. Stay with my kids, play games, a lot of Monopoly, you know, a lot of uh, Uno, a lot of uh, little projects that me and my, my kids do and my wife. You know, we try to keep busy, try to keep our minds off this whole thing. Bueno, bueno, que aguanten y que todo el mundo en su casa, ¿no? Stay home. <risa> Me tengo que reír. Que sea rico, Felix, se que aguanten, que se queden en su casa. Stay home. <risa> Everybody's trying to stay busy doing what we love. The beauty of what we do is being out there. Sticking together. Seeing familiar faces. Competing and winning. Just being together. Enjoying each other's company out there. Working on the car. I painted all the calibers white. Cleaned up the car as much as you can. But it gets stressful out here. You know, stay home. Work on your cars, do something, <laughs> you know, look after your family, you know, be well, be safe. I love you all, every single car club up there, man. My opinion on how do I feel about not having a car club season. I'm not too thrilled about it. The season was, or is not sure yet, but my first. One and I have plans, always wanted this, and now look, but not giving up. How I feel about not having a car club season. Yeah, that's a rough one there. I had a couple big events planned, some special things. I mean, unfortunately, with the social distancing and all that, I had to cancel all that. And I'm pretty sure <laughs> a lot of car clubs are feeling it. I mean, we just have to fall back, do what we got to do, make it. So uh, to all my peoples out there, in the 413 and CT and the surrounding cities from North Bree Johnny and the North Bree family. Please y'all stay safe and don't worry, this season's gonna fly by. Take it as you know, you recruits, work on your projects, work on planning your shows, come hard, you know what I mean? The car club community is about the kids as much as it is about us. We teach them, we show them a different way, some to love, as they grow up. We're more than just car clubs. Wilmer is our, uh, is our honorary member of the Regulators Auto Club. He's in Puerto Rico with his mom, Jahaira. Wilmer di la gua. La guagua. La guagua. El bobo. Little Wilmer plays a big part on what the Regulators are today, what we're, what we're about, you know what I mean? He was the he was the, 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 the young child with cerebral palsy back in uh, 2018, which uh, we, we, we granted him a, 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 a Three Kings Day wish that he wanted. And ever since then, we've, we've, we've kept in contact and we always make sure that he's doing okay, that his mom is doing okay, that his family's doing okay, you know what I mean? So, like I said, he is one of us for life. Unfortunately, our show had to be canceled this year. Auto Jam, a cure for cancer too, had to be canceled out due to this coronavirus. And um, you know, we're gonna resume it back in, in in 2021. But I created an award that was gonna debut this year at the at the event, which will debut next year. And it's an award in Wilmer's name. You know what I'm saying? So it will be called Wilmer's Cause. So one recipient will be the uh, the winner of that of that award, Wilma's Cause. Loyalty Auto Club. They show their love and support in their own special way. That's the beauty of the car club community. This is what we feel about this um, Corona virus. This is how we feel. This is what we're gonna show you how we feel. Feel 
like that. So this is over. So now we're all gonna be like a family living out for each other. And for people that are not here and have passed away for this conditioning thing. We will be out there soon enough doing what we love to do. Be patient. It's all blow through. Some of us hold the damnedest grudges for stupid shit. Love them and how much they mean to you. You know? Or just send them a message. Tell them that you're there. That's what life is all about. Uh, it's, this is life. This is, this is something you can't, you cannot get back if you lose. And think about certain things in life. And forget about the petty stuff. Whatever problems you had with your family, you need to settle it now. Not when you're in a bed like other people. Because um, this affects everyone. You know, you, you only get that. In life, you only get one chance. True words spoken by wise men. Some people will survive the COVID-19 and live to talk about it. But for others that didn't survive, their families will be the ones to carry the scars the rest of their lives. The hardest thing is for someone to die alone without their family. It's horrible. Thousands of lives taken by the COVID-19. 90% of them died alone. It's hard to see images like this. Bodies being put in the back of ice trucks. It's, it's, uh... It's fucked up to die alone. You know what I'm saying? Um, no one, no one deserves to die alone. The images are heart wrenching, a cold reality. And to watch them die the, this way, it, it hurts, and it's like your family just passing away before your eyes, or the poor nurses who have to sit there and call you know, the families and say, I'm so sorry to let you know your loved one has passed away. And to hear the pain and the, the agony on the other end of that phone because they have guilt because their loved one passed away alone and they, they weren't able to say their final goodbyes and they're not going to be able to have a proper service for them. Once again, these images are gut-wrenching and hurtful. We can't help but to hurt with all those families. All those families that couldn't say goodbye. The cities are doing everything possible to take care of these bodies with dignity and respect. This story has no happy ending, no peace, no solace. Pray for all those families that are devastated and pray for the ones that we've lost. May they fly with the angels. Only broken hearts and tears is what's left.
as I walk through the valley of the shadows of death. It all ends and begins with the Lord. Pray. Pray. We will get through this. Like I said, my friends, I don't have all the answers. I wish I did. But what I do got is a whole bunch of friends, peers from the car club community, family members that all took part in this documentary and this project. And I'm grateful and I'm thankful to have been able to work with all of you guys on this. You know what I mean? To bring this message across. And um, also, I have a friend right now that's going to give us a prayer. He's the president of Team Beyond Limits from Massachusetts, Sion Emanuel. Check it out. Hi guys, this is Sion Emanuel. Um, estoy aquí para hacer un prayer for the people that need the help right now. Y están pasando por las situaciones que yo sé que el Señor les va a ayudar. Vamos a orar rápidamente. Señor y Dios. Padre Celestial que estás en los cielos, te damos a ti la gloria, la honra y, y el honor, Señor, porque nos permite, aleluya, hacer esta oración especial. Mira a cada uno de mis amigos de los car shows, cada team, Dios mío, pon tu mano sobre cada uno de los CEOs de cada team, al grupo de cada uno de ellos, a la familia de cada uno de ellos, a sus hijos, a sus esposas, a sus compañeras. A todos, Dios mío, los que, aleluya, están pasando por un momento de necesidad, lo cual necesitamos que tú nos cubras, Señor, en el nombre poderoso de Jesús. Bendice, Dios mío, y ayúdanos a superar estas cosas que estamos pasando. Sabemos que ya tú lo has hecho, que ya tú has comenzado, que tú vas a romper cadena, que tú vas a estar con nosotros día a día y que vamos a poder el año que viene, si tú lo permites, Señor, estar unido, aleluya, y hacer la diferencia por la comunidad y por las personas que nos necesitan. Gracias, Dios mío. Bendice los hospitales, las personas que necesitan de tu ayuda. Bendice todo para la gloria y el poder de tu nombre, Jesús. Amén. God bless everybody. Uh, first of all, I want to thank Nelson from The Regulators for having me even in this documentary. Stay together. Stay as one. Because this is what it should be. This is how it should be. Amen. I love you all. Let's stay strong. Let's stay focused. And God bless. Sé que Dios está ahí para todos nosotros y yo sé que vamos a salir de esto. Va, de una forma u otra vamos a salir de esto. I pray for all of you. I pray for everybody on the front lines of this fighting. I pray for everybody that may have been affected by it. And I send my condolences to anybody who's lost somebody from this. Please, guys, stick together. Just hold on. God bless. And keep fighting. Look at the bright side of things and understand that nothing's forever, that eventually everything uh, will go back to normal and uh, we will get through this. Take time to think and just be positive. This, this will all be over soon, man. Much love. And I'm looking forward to seeing each and every one of y'all. You know what I'm saying? I would say shake your hands, but we're going to have to elbow it up. Much love. All right, peace out. We've survived many things. We're stronger as a community. We stick together. We're gonna get through this together. Keep your faith up and always keep your faith in God. We got this. In God's name, we will make it together. We gotta get through this and we will get through this, but we all gotta play our part. Together, we can beat this.
but we need to put our warrior shield and we will get through this together. Yes. Last and not least, you know, just want to tell everybody, together we can all make it through this. Prayers and blessings to everybody. Stay safe. Do what you got to do to keep healthy. We're going to get through this together. It may not be today or tomorrow. We don't know when it will be. But together, we'll get through this. Brothers and sisters, stay strong, have faith, and stay in contact with loved ones. And with God in our corner, we will survive. We've been through worse with less. We are strong. We got this. Love and respect to all. Thanks now. It would be a lesson learned. And we just got to get through this. We got to stay together. We got to stick together. Be there for each other. Follow these rules that they're giving us. And hopefully we can get through this and to be over and done with. We're all coming together. Stay inside, and we're gonna be there for you if you do that, right? Right. Stay safe. Stay safe. We will get through this together. Street King. I love you guys. Like I said, stay safe. We will get through this together. We will make it through this together. We will all get through this together. Together, we're going to get through this. With the grace of God, we will make it through this together.